Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Oklahoma Sports Scene. I'm Chris Lincoln, along with the coach, Gil Kraut, House Public Schools Athletic Director. Busy, busy time of year. Coach, back to school, back to football. Back to school. We got football. We got uh, softball. We've got <laughs> cross country. We've got cheer. Uh, and uh, now it's time to really get serious about this, uh, this high school football. And, and one of the busiest and hardest working groups are the bands. Well, the bands, you know, they work seven, eight hours a yeah. day. They it's really incredible. do. And, you know, and, and it's really, uh, that's the, it, it, what's interesting about that, that's the one activity that the OSSA does not have a, a state championship in. Amazing. The, the, the OBA, the Oklahoma Band yeah. Association, has their own state championship huh. for marching band. Now, they have instrumental music and right. vocal music and all the other things, but marching band, they've stayed away from it, and they work, I wow. mean, yeah. tirelessly. It's unbelievable. Well, shout out to those band members, also those uh, young ladies of the cheer and uh, Palm as well, and high step dancers. I mean, it's quite a show in high school football anymore, so get out and support them, as Gil talked about with later. We have quite a show for you as well. So we started with Austin Chadwick. This Fight Magazine has become really kind of the Bible for high school sports coverage around the, uh, around the state and stuff, certainly. Austin Gil. done a great job. You know, Austin was one of our boys at Union back yeah. in the day and then went to TU yeah. and uh, got into the publishing business. And, uh, I mean, this is Quincy Central for the state of Oklahoma. 368 teams. Right. All of them featured in this magazine, Bike Magazine. So Every team yeah. that plays football yeah. in high school. you got a couple of TPS coaches. Uh, well, we've join got, us. you know, uh, Brad Caleb, uh, the head football coach at Booker T. Washington, uh, is uh, uh, our guy. And, uh, you know, the, the Hornets are excited about this year. they got yeah. a lot of prospects back. We've got the good young quarterback uh, who started as a freshman when he was about 14 years old. <laughs> and uh, so but he's a little more mature now. And then Tony Daniels uh, from Edison. Uh, and Tony is his uh, third year there. And. Uh, he's really done a good job of bringing those kids along. Has 27 seniors, he'll tell us later today. And uh, that's unbelievable to retain that yeah. many kids through your program. But he's also got one of the top college prospects in the country, Savion Morrison, their outstanding running back. In fact, he was going to make his announcement, official announcement, of when he was going to school earlier today. We taped, of course, our show at Wednesday at 10 o'clock. But uh, look for Savion to see who he decided to go with because he had a bunch of offers, didn't he? 23. He has 23 offers. And uh, Wisconsin came in yesterday. And uh, he is a quality young man, a good student, athlete, yeah. uh, and is a charismatic person with the football. So uh, we're excited about that. That When you have a, a, a student athlete of that talent, that helps everyone. It helps sure. the school. Yeah. It helps the teammates. And it makes people feel really, really good about uh, coming to work every day. Nathan Thompson of Fox 23 Sports is going to join us. They do, we think, probably the best job covering high school football. I think uh, Fox 23 Sports is, uh, you see them almost at every one of our stadiums, I know, and they're all over town. They, they try to cover, I think, 12 or 14 games a night, which yeah. is unbelievable. It is. Great job. Fox 23, Nathan Thompson joining us later on the show. Well, Coach, hot topics, the hottest one going. We have no starting quarterbacks for our four major college football programs in this area. OU, OSU, Tulsa, Arkansas, finally... We have a decision and an announcement. Not a surprise. Oklahoma has named the Alabama transfer will be the starting quarterback for the Sooners, Jalen Hurts. You know, that's interesting because everybody was talking about, uh, 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 what's his name? Spencer Rattler. Spencer freshman, Rattler, true yeah. True freshman, yeah. I want to say Spencer Tillman. Yeah, we've had him too. <laughs> but right. uh, uh, how great a talent. And, and I've understood. I mean, he's close. Yeah. He's close. And I think, as we have talked earlier, the, the one variable in that, is has he taken a snap with 80,000 people in the stands? That's I right. And he has not. Yeah. And Jalen Hurts is 26 and 2 when there's more than 80,000 in the stands. For Alabama. So, not a surprise. Jalen Hurts will be the starting quarterback for the Oklahoma Sooners 2019. Uh, Tanner Mordecai, a redshirt freshman, expected to get some playing time as he did last year. And then they said, who knows if they'll get Spencer Rattler in or not, the true freshman who was the number one high school recruit two years ago. The now, great thing about yeah. that, uh, Chris, is right. that with the new rule. Uh huh. He can play up to four games and not count. That's what's nice. You're right. You know, and still yeah. be a redshirt freshman yeah. next year. That's so, I, you know, and I, I, and I think that's what our good yeah. friend over at Oklahoma State, uh, Coach Gundy, I think he's got, uh, he's going to have three quarterbacks. Yeah. And he's going to audition through the first four games and figure out who the one is, and then he'll pick one. Trying to figure this out. Drew Brown is the transfer from Hawaii over at <laughs> Oklahoma State. Then their redshirt freshman, everybody's raved about the kid from Texas, very highly recruited. Spencer Sanders, who didn't get into any games last year, and, uh, they're going to see maybe he might win the job. They're still waiting to make a decision over in Stillwater. TU, uh, just at their scrimmage uh, last week, Coach, uh, Seth Boomer, the uh, young man from Collinsville, uh, played quite a few games for uh, TU last year. He's in the mix with them, as well as the 
Transfer from Baylor University, Zach Smith, who played so well for Baylor a couple years ago. They haven't made a decision. Coach Montgomery hadn't decided on that yet as well. AP College Football is out, Coach. No real surprises here as uh, the top two remain Clemson, Alabama, followed by Georgia, Oklahoma, number four. Oklahoma was number four in the, in the coaches' poll, too. And, you right. know, I think that's about probably where they are. And I think the biggest question everybody has, it's no secret, can they play defense? They have Texas, yeah. They if have they Texas can, number 10, Coach. Yeah, yeah. Texas is overrated. <laughs> Always like to hear in that. In a word. Outside Oklahoma and Texas, the uh, other big 12 schools mentioned, uh, Iowa State is number 21. TCU, West Virginia, and Oklahoma State all receive votes. The only poll that counts, of course, Coach, is the college football playoff poll. It's the sixth year of the college football playoffs. Their first poll will be coming out November 5th, following the 10th week of the season. That's when it gets serious. Well, it does, and, they, and they, you have enough data at that point to be able to make a good decision. Right. I mean, you've got, you've got seven or eight, nine games at that point, and you can see who's ready and who's not. And, frankly, who's got injured players and who doesn't, because that makes right. a big difference. Mark your calendar for Sunday, December the 8th at, on ESPN from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. That's when they'll announce the final four, those who play in the playoffs, and uh, decide the semifinals. The semifinals this year are the Fiesta Bowl in uh, Phoenix and the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl in Atlanta. The national championship game, mark it on your calendar, January the 13th, New Orleans at the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. College football openers, again, we've had those on quite a week now. Coach, uh, getting ready that last week in August, getting underway. Well, we got the money game for TU. Yeah, they go right. to Michigan State oh, and uh, East Lansing. They're getting one point two million for that. One point two million. That helps the budget. Oh, you know, man. Thank you, Coach Montgomery. As an athletic director, you appreciate yeah, that. Exactly. Oklahoma State, of course, uh, that same night, TU starts at six thirty on FS1, followed by Oklahoma State playing at Oregon State at uh, nine thirty. So, two great football games for our area fans, back to back for you. August thirty first, Arkansas opens at Portland State and over at uh, Fayetteville, and then Sunday. All to themselves, September 1st, OU has Houston coming in on ABC. Sunday Night Football. Be Can't great. beat that, you I know. know. And, uh, and it'd be great to, uh, to see Dana Hogerson come back to Norman. NFL starts their 100th season of football, September the 5th. Green Bay at Chicago gets them underway with the 100th season of, of NFL football. And we have the 150th season, of course, of college football. Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame inducted their class of seven. I have a picture here showing the seven inductees. Uh, some of the headliners included Bob Stoops, of course, the legendary coach of the Sooners, Patty Grasso, the outstanding uh, softball coach, uh, Mike Moore, uh, Oral Roberts University, and, and Major League Baseball player also in the mix there. And FedEx Cup golf coach, a big paycheck coming this weekend, $15 well, want, million. $15 dollars million, dollars, and I tell you, Justin Ooh. Thomas played lights out this week to be 24 under. Uh, and, and go in as wow. rank number one. In the, That's right. In the, and, and with a two-shot advantage already, too. Abs absolutely. Yeah. August 20th to 25th, hard to believe. It's the final home season uh, homestand for the Tulsa Drillers baseball team. So get out, support them at One Oak Field. We'll be back with Austin Chadwick. Bright Magazine talk high school football on Oklahoma Sports Scene. Cheers. Cheers. Y'all have everything tasted. That is awesome. I come bearing gifts of the liquid variety. Bricktown Brewery, come and get it. Whether it's a wedding, birthday, family reunion, or company event, give your next big event a unique country feel at our Red Barn Event Center located just north of Tulsa. We feature plenty of party room inside and out for up to 350 guests, a huge open floor space, and even a big stage. The Red Barn features a full kitchen and separate bride and groom dressing areas. Outside weddings are beautiful under our 100-year-old pecan tree. For your next big event, for the do-it-yourself wedding, the Red Barn Event Center is the perfect choice. Booking now for future events. showroom when I left yesterday. Uh, no, sorry, Jen. I haven't seen it. Are 
Are you positive you haven't seen it? Hey, Mo, I went ahead and pulled the MDX back up on the showroom for it. Oh, hey, Jen. Haven't seen it, huh? It's official, football is here. We know because Austin Chadwick and Mark Rogers' Oklahoma pigskin preview from Bike Magazine has hit the stands and great to have you with us here. And I thought, boy, it's great to get this in our hands. I'll tell you, hard to get rid of high school football without Bike Magazine. It is, uh, it's a, more in a labor of love than anything. How I many mean, years now, Austin? Oh, well, Mark's been doing it for about 20 years. Wow. And, yeah. uh, and we've been doing our magazine, the Bike Magazine in, in Tulsa, about 15 years now. Wow. And then Mark and I partnered on this deal nine years ago and, uh, and it's, it's, it's worked out really well. It really has, you know, he's a, he's an expert, especially on the west side of the state. Mm -hmm. And then we take care of the east side pretty good and it's, yeah. it works out pretty well. Well, the great thing it gives us a, a, a plethora of views across the state <laughs> yeah, really. of who they all are, because, right. you know, you get so locked into your side. No doubt. And you don't know who the competition is over on the west side. That's, that, that's right. I, I love this section. Year by year stats, mm -hmm. back teams' records. And Absolutely. Stuff. That's uh, Chris Wolfong, who's, who works with the OSSA. OSSA he's right. kind of got a, a really cool website. He does some great things with um, just stats, and, and he puts out an almanac every year. So we take some cool excerpts from that, you know, your all time leading rushers, passers, things like that. We put it in the magazine. So we've kind of got an almanac section, if you will, that, that gives you a lot of history. And, mm -hmm, and yeah. guys like Barry Lewis will say, hey, thanks for putting that in there this year because he'll, he'll reference it sure. many times. So. Oh, yeah, he will. Yeah, give us the timeline for the magazine. When you guys are probably year round working on this. Isn't yeah, it? well, it, it's one of those things where we'll start uh, April, May. We'll start sending questionnaires out. Coaches like to get their their spring ball well, going, yeah. you know, so they know what they're mm -hmm. going to have as far as their personnel. And and, uh, and we hammer away in June. It's a, um, it's a, we start working 12, 14 hour days in June and, and we go off to press. Always try to go off to press before 4th of July. We've been able to do it the last couple of years. Um, and, and so we've gotten a little bit better at getting this thing out a little bit earlier. So you find it difficult or easy to get those coaches to respond? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, uh, the key there is a guy named Rod Coulter. You know Rod know pretty Rod. well. Rod yeah. is, uh, he handles all of our OSSA programs. So he calls okay. coaches and athletic directors all year long. And, uh, and when, we, when we've got some people we got to go try to get a hold of, we put Rod on them, and it doesn't, doesn't take very long. You'd be amazed at calling a police department in, a, in Atoka, Oklahoma. You can get the coach pretty quick. Uh, you know? So that's, that's one of those uh, secrets we don't tell people, but now everybody knows. That. I feel pretty good because yeah. he calls me. Yeah, he calls you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Well, what are some of the features in this 2019 edition? Well, really, we, we kind of uh, did a cool uh, play on words there with, uh, you know, East versus West. Right. Um, the, on the west side, um, in 6A1 especially, Norman's got a really, really good team, Coach. They, they, it's probably the best team they've had maybe since that 92 team mm -hmm. they had. And uh, they got about five or six D1 kids. Uh, the Kate Horton kid is, a, is an OU commit. He's a baseball player. He plays quarterback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and you know me, anytime I can put a couple of big kids on the cover, we uh, focused on the offensive lineman, uh, Andrew Rame, obviously over here at, at Broken Arrow. Yeah, we had the, him on our show recently. One of the best I've seen uh, yeah. at, at this level. Uh, incredible athlete. Great feet work, uh, footwork as far as uh, O-line play. I'm partial to that. And, and OU. Uh, he's, he, he is committed to yeah. OU. Ben Sparks, the kid from Norman, is, yeah. is committed to SMU. So uh, we we did that. We've also got a handful of other kids uh, from the east side and the west side that will probably hook up in the state championship, uh, going all the way down into the classes. We've got a, we've got some great pairings from the. I east keep west hearing side. a little bit of rumbling about Mustang. Mustang's got a good. Well, really, with Mustang, it's a uh, lead blanket ship. I mean, that guy yeah. is uh, he's aces, and uh, and you know he's. He's taken over that team. He's shown, obviously, it begs when he was there to win a state championship last year. He really got Bartlesville playing well, and mm -hmm. now he's going over to Mustang. And, you know, Coach, you know this as well as anybody. Um, he's bringing a little bit of that, hey, this is how they do it on the right. east side. Yeah. And, and so let's go to a school on the west side. They don't look like splitting, so hopefully they can stay yeah. intact and, mm -hmm. and kind of grow and see if they can uh, turn that whole program around. I was talking about another season where the big four in this side mm -hmm. of the state, uh, talking about Union, Jenks, Owasso, Broken Arrow, all with first year starting quarterback. They all have uh, new guys, if you will. Um, yeah. You know, it, it's funny when we were going through this, Broken Arrow probably returns uh, most of their key players uh, from last year. Miles Slusher is a great player, yeah. obviously, Andrew Rain. And uh, we've got them kind of kind of as the favorites in class 6A1. And then uh, and Owasso had to play a lot of sophomores last year with Bill Blankenship, mm -hmm. and they return a lot of guys. So we've got them right there, one and one A. Yeah. Um, and then Union and Jinx kind of have to reload a little bit. And, uh, and so we'll see kind of how those teams play out. But that's, that's kind of who we like in 6A1. How about 5A? 5A is always, always interesting when you, when you look at, you know, what Carl Albert's done, Coach, um, even after wow. Gary Rose has retired. Right. 
Uh, they've got a lot of good players. Uh, this Reese Collier kid plays linebacker. He is a heat seeker, man. And, uh, and with that, they've got a, a Rico Windham is a kid that's committed to Tulsa. Tulsa didn't even see this kid until he came to camp. And after two days of camp, Philip Montgomery said, son, you got to ride if you want it. And uh, so he took it. So they've got some good players, obviously, over there in 5A. Um, over here in 5A, uh, you know, Bishop Kelly's going to be a good, uh, a really good squad. But there's a few others. There's some Tulsa public schools in there as well. And uh, you had Tony Daniels on. I mean, right. goodness gracious, what Edison has done is uh, is really impressive. And, uh, and when you got a horse like they do in Savion, it's, it, it'll be I interesting to see. I think 5A might be as wide open mm -hmm. as it has been in a long time. Right. You know, right. and if you if you don't play every week in 5A, and you know, <laughs> and I always told my guys at Union when we were there the difference when we went to 6A, and I'll never forget it. The, the first staff meeting I had with them said, "Well, guys, the greatest thing we have today is we can't move up." We're in 6A. <laughs> that's the best thing we can. <laughs> that's it. Us. And I said from this point on. But the difference we saw uh, on our team was if you were in 5A and you lost your quarterback, you were in trouble. Mm -hmm. If you were in 6A. You just put another one in yeah. because that happened to us, yes. you know, yeah. two or three times. And so the, the, the depth is really, but 5A can change over a weekend Quickly. In, with an injury. Quickly. You know, and then you see teams that have a ha, have a good player like Savion uh, that can, they, in a 5A game, he can take it over. Dom, dominate the game. No yeah, doubt. And, and so that should be a lot, a lot of fun. 6A2 is going to be great. Uh, oh Book, Booker goodness. T. Yeah. Washington, Bigsby. Stillwater's really good. You know, right. Mike Gundy's son yeah, is a good son, player. And, uh, and so 6A2 should be a lot of fun. I know Brad's kind of chomping at the bit. They want to get you Yeah, know, we have Coach Kelly coming up on the show later. Also, uh, again, uh, having uh, Edison High School going to be joining on the show later, too, including Savion Morris, who is an impressive young man. Oh, no doubt. Wow, I'll tell you something else. Some of these smaller schools, of course, I did love nothing better than a Find that high school football <laughs> in Oklahoma, just the, the whole town turn off of these games. No it's doubt. Fantastic. And, and that's what's a lot of fun about the magazine. We have 368 schools that we've got to go get all this information on. Wow. And you'd be surprised. You know, you get down into 4A and, and Tuttle's good again. They, mm -hmm. It's been a while. Brad Ballard, who was at Lincoln Christian over here with Darren Melton, right. he's down there. Took him to a state championship last year, and they return a bunch of guys. Uh, but you, you get into the rural parts of Oklahoma and it's, I mean, it, it, it's still the, the same as it always has been. The town shuts down, and, uh, and they, they get after it, and they, um, they travel well. And so we're, we're, we're excited about that, not only uh, just on the west side of the state, but over here on the east side as well. There's a lot you of know, I have, I have a funny story about that. The first year I was at Union 1976, <laughs> and we host the state championship for Bristow and Vanita. Oh, my. In the stadium. Big deal. Yeah. I'm a first year AD. I don't know what to do. <laughs> so we're hosting for the state state championship. They sell it out over there? Oh, well, no. But the thing was, the press box was sold out. <laughs> <laughs> and that's your job. Because it, because it was uh, about 30 degrees at game time. No doubt. The other thing was the security. I said, uh, I said, oh, we'll have highway patrolmen here from our community. It's no problem. They sat in their cars and watched the game yeah. with the heater on. <laughs> yes. Can but, we park uh, over here on the hill so, so we can get a Mike good Mike Brown view? is sitting up there. Uh, right. And we start to kick the ball off, and these guys have brought space heaters on both sides. Oh, my gosh. Well, they overloaded the circuit. No doubt. Half the lights go off in Union Stadium, <laughs> and I'm, I'm panicked. I mean, oh you know, I'm gosh. a rookie anyway. Right. I'm thinking, oh, my God, what are we going to do? And Mike Brown says, Coach. These guys, this is more lights than they play underneath. That is exactly <laughs> right, uh, especially back in that day. But it, um, but it, is, yeah. it is fantastic to see. It's almost like religion when you go to the oh, small towns. No, no doubt. I mean, you got to be there no on doubt. Friday night. If you're not, you're not even. It's Austin Chadwick, the editor in chief of Vibe Magazine. And I was oh, so impressed with, and you've covered so many years now, Austin, but for as small a state as Oklahoma is, population, mm. incredibly kind of talent this state picks out. It, 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 it is incredible. There was a, a Tulsa World piece Matt Baker did about five or six years ago. It's called Star Search. I remember it was great because it went through um, per capita, you know, how many D1 yeah, athletes come yeah. out of this. And, and they're about, you know, for about 10 years ago, that Jinx and Union would really uh, kind of carry the gravel, the gavel for everybody. Sure. But really, everybody's raised their play. Mm -hmm. Everybody has. And now Oklahoma's not a flyover state. I've got buddies that are coaching in college at Auburn and Texas and, and big time programs. And when they come to Oklahoma now, they come and spend a whole day. They're going to go see a couple of different right. practices, especially in Tulsa. And, uh, and so that's, it's a big deal. So you get more talent, you get more of the big time programs looking at kids. I mean, kids are getting offered by Michigan now. And, yeah, and of exactly. course, Texas was always few and far between, but sure. now that's a, that's a very common thing. And so it is, uh, it's no longer a flyover state. You when know, it comes when to I coached at Cameron, I coached with three guys that had been high school coaches mm -hmm. in the state of uh, Texas. And uh, we went out recruiting and we came back in. And they said, boy, I'm going to tell you something. He said, 
This is unbelievable. So I thought Texas had good players. Yeah. <laughs> but like you said, per capita. Uh, we got a few of them, too. Has as many no as doubt. anybody. It was, it was amazing. No yeah. doubt. I was so impressed. Not only, of course, the Vibe magazine, you all talk about it, and everybody has to have it. Any high school football fan. But you have a few of these going on, too. Oh, yeah. That's the, the Hurricane <laughs> picked this up at the Hurricane uh, kickoff lunch the other yep. day. Yep. The Hurricane Elite magazine, we've been, we've been doing that for a handful of years to, uh, to, to, to really help out. the. You know, that's my alma mater, of course. Sure. And, and, uh, and it, it gives them kind of a, a really good, um, uh, you know, high-quality magazine where we're going to preview the team and right. all, really all fall sports. And we can talk some recruiting in there since, you know, the university doesn't put it out, so we yeah. do it. And uh, it works out pretty well. So anytime we, we're able to put some ink on paper, we want to make it look good. And he also published this bunch. This is Oklahoma State's <laughs> official media guy, too. So he's doing yeah, it Yeah, we, we get the files for that one. They, <laughs> I, I don't have to put all the information in that wow. one. They just send it to me, and then I'll make sure and get it printed and bound, and it works out pretty good. Well, you so. need a break, doesn't he? Let's give him something. I'll tell you something. Uh, <laughs> on your way home, stop by Bricktown. Hey. Oh, really? Go. Here we go. That's Bricktown right. Brewery. I'm, I'm in on this. I've got a dinner date with my wife. Oh, there you go. go. We'll give, do that. Give so. our best to Mark Rogers. Uh, we will. Congratulations again. A great job of Vite Man. Where can people get the magazine? Uh, here, in, here in Tulsa, we do a pretty cool exclusive deal with Midwest Sporting Goods. It's easy to go over there and pick it up. And then uh, all around North Oklahoma, Northeast Oklahoma, uh, on queue locations. And then we've got different retailers in small towns. So. Great. Austin Chavik, editor in chief of our uh, Vite Magazine. And we're ready now with Hornets and Eagles standing by to join there us here at Oklahoma Sports Scene. Stay with us. Wow. The service is amazing. The food's delicious. I love the avocado fries. I love the energy. <laughs> Local beer. Great food. Truly friendly service. You look all right for you? Bricktown Brewery, come and get it. TU fans, football season is here. And the Golden Hurricane has one of the best home schedules in school history. Season tickets are on sale now, or purchase our three-game mini plan. The plan includes in-state rival Oklahoma State, along with Navy on Military Appreciation Game, and two-time defending league champion UCF, all for only $90. To get your tickets, call 918-631-GO-TO or visit TulsaHurricane.com forward slash tickets. Each week we talk about the GTR and we know for a fact that Forrest Cameron and his wife Sharon put out a tremendous paper. Well, I brought all six of them today. I'd like for you to see them. The Union Bound Dairy. And here is the Owasso Rambler. And if you live in Bixby, how about the Bixby Breeze or Broken Era, the Broken Era Express, Jinx. District, Gazette, and then, of course, the Tulsa Midtown. All of those, the GTR. If you haven't had an opportunity to read one, do it, and you'll be proud of it. Man, look, for us, Cowboy football is way more than just Cowboy football. This is who we are. We come to Boone Picking Stadium as many, but in this sea of orange, we stand as one. And we all know what it looks like. The crowd roaring, arms waving, and bullet flying. It's the paddles popping, the shotgun firing, and the fans rocking. It's our passion, our heart, our family, and our team. Because at Oklahoma State, it's who we are. Welcome back to Oklahoma Sports Scene, and now we have the head football coach at Booker T. Washington, Brad Caleb. Brad, welcome to Oklahoma Sports Scene. Well, thank you for having me. We're glad you're here. Yes. Can't believe it. Fourth season, right, Coach? Yes, fourth wow. season. Unbelievable. And all this pressure of Booker T., a great history of championships, like kind of like nine state championships, most recently 2017, and talk about the prospects of 2019 for the Hornets. Uh, it, pretty promising now that, you know, uh, People ask me all the time, you know, I lost 23 seniors, so that's kind of hard to, to fathom a little bit. But <laughs> I, I like my team. I like my team. We're young. Uh, we've got some seniors that haven't played very much but are stepping in and playing their role. So uh, it's a fun team. Uh, no egos. I mean, they, they're hungry again. They felt uh, the pain when we left when we got beat in the semifinals by Stillwater. So uh, it's a fun group to coach. So I'm excited about this season. 
Tell us about that young quarterback. Ooh, Gentry Williams, huh? Uh, probably the fastest guy I've coached probably in 29 years. Mm -hmm. uh, um, he, I think I started him like week five or six, and uh, uh, I had to get on him a lot, and I always had to ask myself, like, you know what? He's 13 years old, <laughs> and, and he's just a freshman, and, you know, uh, this year he has stepped up. He's a sophomore, and uh, uh, in the spring, you know, he won state in the 400, ran the 47 flat, yeah. and the 200, he got second. Uh, he ran like a 21-2. So uh, we got a lot of weapons. Uh, as far as speed, uh, size, uh, we, we, we have it, but we don't have much depth. So, But uh, Gentry Williams would probably be the key ingredients of uh, us getting back to the state championship again. How and about your defense? Defense, we're going to be really good. going to be really good. we got a lot of veterans on that side of the ball. We're going to be fast. And uh, uh, we had an inter-squad scrimmage last Saturday, and uh, we're going to be fast and good. But And we have some depth at that position. But uh, as far as offense, uh, the things that we can do to kind of diffuse a lot of people is it, just what our speed. We're eight deep at receiver, mm -hmm. and uh, oh. and the deal about it, we can spread you out, and, and it's going to take a special person to spy Gentry William and cover J.J. Hester mm -hmm. and, and, and those guys. So uh, it's going to be a fun season. I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. Interesting. Gentry, just a sophomore, a true <laughs> sophomore. He's already attracting a lot of college attention, and uh, I don't think offers yet, but it's amazing. These guys are recruiting earlier and earlier all the time with these top prospects. Yes. And then, you know, at, matter of fact, he has been offered by OU, OSU, and KU, Already? and Memphis. Golly. So, uh, I don't know if it's due to his uh, football career so far. I mean, because he only played like seven games. <laughs> Track is probably truly the reason why, you know, because you can't I mean, that type of speed is, speed is, is just yeah, unheard of. That, you right? can't coach that. And, <laughs> and I can see why they're going with him. And, and not only is he our quarterback, we, we play him at corner too. So he's a dual wow. player. So, uh, uh, so he's going to be fun to watch this year. Now, usually Booker T's involved with your big all-city football preview. But you had to kick him out finally, right? No, uh, <laughs> what we did, basically, when uh, we made the decision – uh, two years ago, and, and Brad and I and, and Conley right. uh, Phipps and, and Rabu Leva, uh, the girls' basketball coach, all sat down and said, what's the best thing for Booker T? And it looked like since they were the only 6A school in Tulsa, right. uh, that uh, joining the Frontier Valley Conference was the best thing overall for the entire program. Yeah. We're talking about 19 sports now, sure, not right. just because football doesn't play. Football right. plays in the district. Yeah. And... Uh, because of that, and because they play in 6A2 uh, and play some 6A1 schools, it's better for them to go to a scrimmage where there's 6A1 people sure. and they can feel engaged where they are. And it's better for our 5As and our 4As to play against one another. So that, it was yeah. it was a win-win deal, sure, I think, right. for everyone. And the other thing, it made the bracket even because there's <laughs> two teams. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so. yeah. Pretty good to pick a scrimmage, though, against Jinx. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, Gil told me that last year. I was like, are you kidding with me? Can I? <laughs> so uh, it turned out pretty good. You know, we went there last year, and uh, uh, the deal I like about it is it's a one-day um, scrimmage and half, half game. And, uh, of course, we played Jinx last year and ended up beating them. Yeah. And uh, so that was gratifying. And uh, this year we're going to do the same thing. And uh, like Gil said, I think it's – I think Jinx is only 6A team in there, and I think the rest of them is 6A too. Right. So uh, I think it does benefit us getting into something like that as opposed to, to all city because, you know, we, we don't see the 4As and, 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 and 5As. And so, and plus I like my kids to be challenged, you know, and, uh, and, and you know, anytime you get opportunity to, to go to Jinx and beat them there, I mean, it's hard to beat them at their place. And, and we did it last year. so. Uh, so it's, it might be a revenge factor this year because we'll play them again, but uh, I think we match up very well with them this year as far as speed-wise. So, um, and this, and then again, as a head coach, this kind of going to dictate what type of team I'm going to have because right. I am young and and, and it, I need this type of game to kind of see where we're going to be for the next week. What do you want to accomplish through your early season practice and this first scrimmage? Uh, you know, I, I just I just want to see some some of my seniors kind of step up with them haven't played very much. And I got some young guys who haven't played very much either. Uh, uh, some, I got some sophomores that uh, are very talented and uh, never played at this level. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, you know, 
And then D, we got him in the ninth, ninth grade. We're in a Frontier Conference, and we do play the Jinx and the Broken Arrow. But as far as the 6A2, they haven't been challenged. So uh, this will kind of indicate what type of team I have or who will step up to the, the occasion. And, and like I said, I like to challenge my team in the non-district games. And like I said, we started with Jinx, and I mean, they didn't know one team, Providence State, winning overall of any team in the state. And then we, we played uh, North Little Rock, who that guy there has changed their program. It was in the inner series yeah, school right. yeah. five years ago. They, they only won like three or four games, and, and he got those, he got them going. And, and then we come back and play Bishop Kelly, and then we played Benville at home, our first home game, I think on the 13th. So uh, I kind of like to challenge those guys uh, just to kind of when we get in our district play that – uh, they seen the best of the best mm -hmm. and, and it can perform at a level that they need to perform. I know I've circled on my calendar. A lot of people have already <laughs> for calendar. <laughs> October 4th, Bixby comes to Booker T. Yes. Uh, and people say, well, and you got them for homecoming, you Ooh. know. So I said, well, I'm kind of re returning the favor because they played us homecoming <laughs> last year. So we, I yeah. just want to return the favor. But, <laughs> you know, Lauren Montgomery is a good friend of yeah. mine. You know, uh, I remember he's a little cat coming from Northeastern and, uh, uh, he got on Allen Trimble's staff, and uh, uh, he's a good coach, and he got their program going kind of like where I want our program yeah. to go, and he does a great job. And and I just feel like whoever won that game is going to probably be the district champion, and uh, and uh, and we want to win that game to to kind of get on the other side of the bracket without meeting, you know, the still waters and, and so forth. Well, coach Kelly, thanks for uh, coming in. I know you got practice this afternoon. We have something for you, though, too, Yeah, coach. before you go to practice, maybe you can stop by Bricktown. <laughs> hey, there you thank go, you. I Bricktown appreciate Bricktown. it. Thank you. You like those Hornets this year. Well, coach. thank you. Looking for it. Appreciate it. Brad Kelly, head football coach of the Booker T. Washington Hornets, always one of the championship contenders. We're going to come back with another TPS football program, the Edison Eagles, joining us next. Winston, tie or bow tie? Mmm, good choice! Sammy, they're here! Good morning, welcome to Don. Come on, you guys, what did you think they were here for? Well... It's the Honda Summer Spectacular Sales Event going on now at Don Carlton Honda. At Roger State University, we keep things personal. It all starts here. We make sure our graduates get the most out of their education. RSU has campuses in Claremore, Bartlesville, and Pryor, with on-campus housing and a wide variety of programs to suit your needs. It all starts here. Roger State University. The Eschbach 6E Ranch on 800 acres north of Tulsa invites you to know the benefits of miniature Herefords. The 6E has always been committed to providing the finest quality meats. Our hormone-free beef is always on grass, then grain-fed the last 90 days to that perfect mix of marbling and taste. We will deliver the animal to a USDA-inspected facility. All you have to do is pick up your vacuum-packed processed meat. Fill your freezer with the finest quality beef at the best price. We also specialize in registered miniature Herefords for breeding and show. Call the 6E Ranch today. Tasting. That is awesome. I come bearing gifts of the liquid variety. Bricktown Brewery, come and get it. Welcome back to Oklahoma Sports Scene, and we have another hip football coach of the Edison Eagles, Tony Daniels, and his running back. Savion Morrison, welcome to Oklahoma Sports Scene, guys. Thank you all for having us. A lot of excitement with the Edison Eagles this year, Coach. You got them going. I know last year, finishing off, winning five of the last six games. Yeah, it was a it was a world whirlwind. I mean, it from the guys that we have, um, and not just with this young man that's sitting here beside me, but yeah. our class of 2020 kids. I mean, it's just phenomenal. Um, we have 27 seniors, and uh, just one of my my better classes I've had before. 27 seniors. Wow. 27 seniors. That's fantastic. That uh, cuts down the teaching time a little bit, doesn't it? Does. It does. Yes, it does. <laughs> yeah. So as we look at uh, this season and uh, everything, uh, Tony, uh, 
uh, through your early season practice uh, and the All-City preview, what do you want to see from your team? So just a lot of stuff that we keep kind of focusing on right now. I mean, we focus a lot of fundamentals. Um, really just, you know, it's, it's getting to that point now where these guys, we, I've been with them for the last three years, going on our fourth year, and we keep talking to them about, listen, if you want to be uh, a great team, it's you all that are seniors that are going to lead this. It's not going to be the coaches. Um, you've been starting the last two to three years with us. You need to take the reins, and it's, it's your team. It's not just ours and what we focus on and what we do. You all need to, you know, take control of it. And throughout uh, the first, kind of throughout the, the summer, we had quite a few of the seniors showing up, um, had a, a pretty good turnout with Summer Pride in what we've had the last couple of years. But I, I think just over and all, you know, overall, we just want to see um, – Good development. We want to keep uh, keep the kids up and going with a fast pace, and just kind of get them get them used to the heat and get everything up and going. Young man sitting next to him is one of the outstanding college football prospects from the TPS uh, uh, schools, and uh, glad to have Savion Morris in the seven. Welcome to Oklahoma Sports Scene. Fun watching you last season. Uh, talk about some of your goals as a senior, your final year at uh, Edison High. Uh, some goals for myself. I really just want to do better than what I did last year. I know it's a I know it's a high task to try to complete because. Last year I stand out a lot, but I just want to go higher than that. And then a goal for the team, I want just everybody to buy in. We got a good chemistry, like Coach said, 27 seniors. So just really everybody buy in. And the plan is to go state, but we just want to know every week. So time after time. All he has to do to top last year, by the way, is last year he had 2,761 rushing yards, 3,100 all-purpose yards, 35 touchdowns. And made all the highlight films. And I know all the college recruiters are talking about you. Who are some of the schools interested? And I know you're getting ready to make a big announcement. Talk about some of the schools you've been to and uh, are trying to get you to come play at the next level. Uh, I've been to Texas, Baylor, uh, Arkansas, Missouri, but I also, I, I got a lot of offers, honestly, so it's not just off the top of my head. But sure. uh, yeah, it's a lot of schools that want me to come play. I have, I think I have all power five offers, so it's really just cool. It's and you want to you want to make a decision pretty soon, just get it behind before the season starts, is that the idea? Is yes, sir. So I know I won't, just want to go my whole season focusing on my senior year. So make the decision uh, actually this Wednesday. What makes him so special uh, besides obviously incredible coaching? Just a, just a <laughs> wonderful kid. I mean, yeah. you know, it's <clears throat> character, charisma. I mean, he walks into the room. I mean, just kind of lights it up, you know. And that's what I told all the, the college coaches. Yeah. I mean, he could walk into the room of 100 you know, people, or he could walk into the room of just us sitting here. I mean, he's going to light up the room, and he's got a uh, he's got a, a talent for that too as well. So I mean, he's just he's just overall just a great kid. You know, last year he broke uh, one of Spencer Tillman's records. Yeah, that's right. He and, uh, did, that's pretty yeah. good. Uh, Spencer got in contact with him. Didn't he? Yes, sir. Yeah. What did he say? Yeah, that was pretty cool. He just kind of shouted me out on Twitter like, "Good job on breaking my record. Keep pushing. Keep God first. Yeah. yeah, that was pretty cool. And of course, Spencer Taylor on from Edison to OU and then on to the National Football League, too. Right. And now a heck of a broadcaster on the network as well. Yes, Edison, TPS, Athletic Hall of Fame. And Hall of Fame, that's right, he sure is. Been this way soon. Talk about this uh, schedule. Get underway, of course, taking on Hill and the scrimmage, the All City. Then open up uh, against Sepulpa, follow that with Memorial. Both those are the fortune before your first road game. Yeah, I, you know, opening up with the All City, um, kind of getting everything kicked off. Uh, we'll open up with Hale, and then depending on how the games go from there, we'll move on. Uh, last year, we had a, a goal of winning the All City Championship, and due to weather, we weren't able to that, yeah. to uh, to be able to play that game. But um, you know, that's what we're kind of focused on. We want to go out. We want to compete. We we want to keep continuing our depth to get us ready for the first home, uh, home opening game with Sepulpa. And they got that quarterback over there that, uh, that uh, did very well against us last year. And, uh, you know, that's one thing that we want to try and contain this year. That's September 6th, the uh, season getting underway for uh, the Edison Eagles here. Damian, what about uh, as far as rivals? Who's the team you most like to face and most you want to beat? Uh, Bishop Kelly, for sure. That's the top. <laughs> that's my top rival. I mean, I know uh, Midtown Class and Memorial is our rival, but I just like feel like BK. We know them guys personally, so it's just a yeah. good battle every time. That's probably our top rival. Yeah. Those would be uh, really two back-to-back -back good good football games. Yes, sir. The Midtown Classic and then Bishop Kelly. Bishop Kelly is always a hard-fought game, well coached, and yes, uh, they'll be prepared. So, uh, who else in the district you think you got to beat to win? Uh, I know we have to beat Claire Moore. I know we have to get Bishop Kelly, uh, Glenpool for sure. Just really our main focus is I'm focused on Claire Moore and Bishop Kelly for sure. 5'11", mm -hmm. 196, that's pretty accurate right now for? About 6'198". Oh, he's gaining all the time here. <laughs> Still wearing number 28? 
Yes, sir. Is that an Adrian Peterson? Thing? Yes, sir. Oh, that's, not, that's not a bad guy to follow, is it, Coach? No, it's not. As you watch him, what has made him such a special running back, so special for this team? I, I mean, like I tell a lot of people that I talk to, I, I think his vision. Um, you know, a lot of people say, well, how is he? Because a lot, of, a lot of highlights that we see, he's just kind of breaking to the outside and he's running. And I said, well, I can put on some clips where he's running in between the tackle and he's lowering his shoulder, running over some linebackers, you know, good-sized linebackers. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's really vision. I mean, you know, throughout practices, you never know. We have specific gaps that you've got to go hit, and he'll hit it and hit the cut side. On the back side, you know, and he'll cut back, and I, he just has really good vision. i tell you what, uh, along with Savion, you had another uh, move in, I think. Uh, did you not from Coeda? We did, yes. Thomas Ivey and uh, Javon Chapman. So, you've got some depth. We've got some depth. Uh, depth is getting better. Uh, a lot of our kids uh, that we have that are the 2020 kids are kids that have started for us. I have some that started for me their freshman year, and uh, a few of the other ones kind of started since their sophomore year. So we've kind of developed um, our offense and defensive schemes and what we like to do and how we attack and, and how aggressive we play. So, I mean, we're, we're, we're continually building the depth, especially up on the offense line, but I mean, skill skill wise, just continuously keep doing that. Tony's done a good job at Edison. You know, he, uh, he wears two hats. He's also the director of athletics. Oh, jeez. And when you're the head football coach yeah. and, uh, and the assistant director of athletics is the head basketball coach. Oh, wow. So they kind of spell off on each other. But um, the overall Edison program has gotten stronger uh, since Tony's been there. Sounds like, it sounds like a great resurgence over there. How about the support from not only the... The Edison High students themselves, but the community itself, they've been very supportive of the Eagles. Yes, they really have. It's just really started picking up, like, like you know, you have to win games for people to come see you. And when we kind of went on that winning stretch, it was just more support on social media, throughout the school, throughout the yeah, social media a lot. So fundraising and all that support is really good. Well, Coach Daniels, everybody concerned about this incredible hot weather we're going through and heat indexes and everything else. So how do you and the coaches monitor this and take care of these guys? Uh, I think one of the, the main things is we go in the morning. So we try and develop a strategy that's going to, to get us into what we're trying to do. You know? So uh, if, we, if we go in the morning and we go from where we're at, if we start and get it done, uh, we kind of beat the heat, but also at the same time still condition uh, for it because we know when school starts here in the next couple of days, it's, gonna be, it's still going to be pretty hot. So. Well, again, Wednesday, our show's on at 10 o'clock Wednesday. By then, the made his announcement. Be sure to... Listen, tune in, and know where Savannah and Shannon Morris are going to be playing this college football at the University of Missouri. I just threw that in my alma mater there. What? No, I, no, I was trying to recruit. I, no, I shouldn't recruit, Coach. Now, we have something for the coach, right? We have something for the coach. Savannah, I can't give you a Bricktown Brewery because then you become a You're professional. An amateur. Yeah. Unless you want to go to Missouri, I'll give you one of these. <laughs> <laughs> but now, Thank if, you. if Coach wanted to stop by and yeah. buy you a Coke, he That's fine. I tried. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah, congratulations. I tell you, sure, well earned it. It's going to be a great senior season for you. and wish you all the best. And wherever you decide to go, we'll be following you and cheering you on. So thank you very much. Yes, sir. Good thank luck, guys. You. Yeah, Savion Morrison, number thank 28, you. the Edison Eagles, their outstanding senior running back. And again, the head football coach of the Eagles, Tony Daniels. A lot expected for Edison High School coming up in 2019. Back with more on Oklahoma Sports Scene. We'll have Nathan Thompson, here, guy 23 sports director, talking about their high school football coverage plans for this fall. At Bricktown Brewery, we're known for our famous original craft beers like Single String Stout and Bluesberry Ale. Did you know we also brew our own root beer at our Oklahoma City brew house? It's called Attaboy Root Beer and you'll love it no matter what your age. Just ask for a Bricktown Kids menu with all the favorites for our guests 12 and under. Bricktown Brewery opens every day at 11 a.m. TU fans, football season is here, and the Golden Hurricane has one of the best home schedules in school history. Season tickets are on sale now, or purchase our three-game mini plan. The plan includes in-state rival Oklahoma State, along with Navy on Military Appreciation Game, and two-time defending league champion UCF, all for only $90. To get your tickets, call 918-631-GO-TU or visit TulsaHurricane.com forward slash tickets.
The Eschbach 6E Ranch on 800 acres north of Tulsa invites you to know the benefits of miniature Herefords. The 6E has always been committed to providing the finest quality meats. Our hormone-free beef is always on grass, then grain-fed the last 90 days to that perfect mix of marbling and taste. We will deliver the animal to a USDA-inspected facility. All you have to do is pick up your vacuum-packed processed meat. Fill your freezer with the finest quality beef at the best price. We also specialize in registered miniature Herefords for breeding and show. Call the 6E Ranch today. Back to talk Oklahoma sports scene with a great friend of ours, Nathan Thompson, who is the sports director at uh, Fox 23 Sports. They say <laughs> Fox 23 News, too. Yeah. <laughs> we want to bring you out today because Gil and I have talked about this a long time. I think your team does, when you say, Coach, the best job of high school football uh, coverage. That's when, I, when I get home, that's the one I look at, yeah. I guarantee you. Well, we appreciate that. Make sure we look straight at the camera and tell everybody <laughs> that. <laughs> no, no, really. It's, it's as comprehensive, and, and you guys are at as many locations. Yeah. as anybody in the area. I yeah, we try no to get about a dozen games, give or take, uh, you know, each week. It kind of depends on kind of logistically a little bit, too, because a news photographer that's going to shoot highlights for us tries to go to a couple games. So yeah. it's harder if the game is kind of out by itself. But uh, we'll try to get about a dozen and get the best games that we and Talk can. about your team, about your game plan to, to cover high school football on Friday nights. So we're going to keep doing high school football tonight like like we've always done our 30-minute high school football show that, that airs time's on 11 o'clock okay. on Fox 23. So it gives people a chance, you know, to go to a game, get back, right. you know, maybe get some fast food on the way home and, get <laughs> right, on right, and, right, and, right. and watch it on the news. And it also gives us a chance to get more highlights and get reaction from coaches and players and get that on the air, too. We still have uh, high school football in the 10 o'clock news. It'll be like the second half of the 10 o'clock news. So we still do a, a large segment of the 10 o'clock news, but even more in our 30-minute show. And you do a game of the week you have in the past? We'll have a game of the week, yeah. And uh, we'll just kind of pick that that week, you know, because sure. you don't want to pick those two right, or three or four right. or five weeks out because you never know how things are going to yeah, change, right. you know, except a couple of big ones we know we'll do. That's right, yeah. <laughs> sure. You know, going into the year, which ones those are. Yeah. Uh, it, high school uh, football has got to be really big for for Fox 23. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we love it. We feel, I mean, not only is it entertainment, you know, and it's fun to watch, but we also kind of view it as community relations mm -hmm. to, to to cover no these schools and to get these kids that are working so hard to you know get some time, their 15 minutes of fame on air, Absolutely. and that's why we try to get as many different schools as we can, also. Nathan, you've been here since 2007. Yeah. You've got a new member of the team, though, for the sports there. Yep, our new uh, weekend sports anchor, Jeff Colby, did a great job for us for about three years. He went down to Dallas, so a nice job for him down there. And now we have Luke Schleyball, who is joining us. And, and he knows a thing or two about big-time football before this. He actually used to work in Knoxville, so they covered Tennessee right. yeah. and the Volunteers. Yeah. So, you know, he'll be good for us for high school football. And, of course, we're used to big-time college football around here, too. Yeah. Well, that'd be great to have uh, have that from the east side. Yeah, and have that SEC feel. Yeah, know? exactly. He can be our expert on SEC football. <laughs> yeah, he's Absolutely. definitely. And that's a fun place. I, I covered one game there. If you remember that, I believe double overtime oh, win for, gosh, for OU yeah. and Baker Mayfield over Tennessee. I was there for that, and it, it is a great crowd there, yeah. and it's a great stadium. Wow. For your uh, high school coverage, what can the high schools do to make it easier for you? To get well, those scores yeah. and the, scores the scores is one of the, the scores oh. is one of the big things for us. Yeah. So you can call in the scores to to our uh, news desk or yeah. you know, and we also sometimes will use Twitter or something like mm -hmm. that. So if you have uh, someone uh, who can even tweet out scores with the hashtag OK Preps is generally what people use across the state. Mm -hmm. That helps us. But any way we can get scores, especially the smaller schools, because even if we don't get a chance to get out and get highlights of games, we have that ticker running across the bottom of the right. screen. Right. And, and we put in every game that's being played in green country that day and it might not pop up if we don't have a score it won't pop mm -hmm. up but if if we get a score it's going in there but nothing more frustrating i've been there <laughs> many years working with you yeah. together of course in the old days of channel eight we'd be out there you would get highlights then you try to find a roster or yeah. someone to call you with a score yeah. or get a roster it makes it challenging for sure it's nice when the schools do but fans you know you yeah, can call sure. it in too sure yeah. absolutely yeah. you bet but we uh, what we try to do is uh uh, we, our, I sent a media list uh -huh. to all of our athletic directors. 
so they know where to call. Yeah. And then I send all the media a key <laughs> contact list right. of we all appreciate our head coaches. That, yeah. Because that way on Sunday you don't have to call me and say, where's, where's Coach Daniels? I yeah. want you call him. Yeah, you're wanting to you know, relax a little bit on your <laughs> exactly, day out. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> David, give us a little personal side. Uh, just great to see you looking so well. You gave us a heck of a health scare last year. I got to talk about your battle with cancer. Yeah, I had a... I was at the Big 12 basketball tournament. I started not feeling good, which was unrelated, just kind of a virus. And wow. just came around that equipment. I was kind of out of breath. And actually, my Apple Watch that I have on right here was giving mm. me uh, warnings that my pulse was high. I was like laying in the hotel room bed with 130 pulse. And mm. the, so all that kind of added up, kind of even a, a sickness that was unrelated, just helped me get to the hospital. And they were able to find a blood clot and a kidney cancer. So if I wouldn't have gone, it ended up. It's all fine now. I've yeah. been cancer free a little over a year. Didn't right, have to do right. chemo even. They just Gee, they wow, cut out great, part yeah. of the kidney and, and they found it early enough. So I really got lucky there because kidney cancer is a kind of deal where if you don't catch it looking at something else, like yeah. they call it an incidental finding, sure. then you won't know about it till it's really too late. Wow. So I was lucky. They cut it out. I've been more than a year cancer free and, and hopefully, you know, it doesn't come back. And a beautiful new addition to the family. Yeah, we have a new uh, a baby girl, Olivia Ruth Thompson, that uh, was born great. back in June. So that gives us uh, two girls now. Nathan, we have something for you here. We're taking time out of your busy schedule to join us here. <laughs> Take your girls to the uh, Bricktown Brewery. All right, oh, sounds good. That. I appreciate it. Thank you, you guys. Keep doing a great job. Right, thank football. you very much. I appreciate it. it. Thank Nathan you. Thompson, he's the sports director at Fox 23 Sports. So there, guys. Right back <laughs> and uh, have our Remington Park Race Report. So stay with us. Y'all, how's everything tasting? That is awesome. I come bearing gifts of the liquid variety. Bricktown Brewery, come and get it. TU fans, football season is here, and the Golden Hurricane has one of the best home schedules in school history. Season tickets are on sale now, or purchase our three-game mini plan. The plan includes in-state rival Oklahoma State, along with Navy on Military Appreciation Game, and two-time defending league champion UCF, all for only $90. To get your tickets, call 918-631-GO-TU or visit TulsaHurricane.com forward slash tickets. At Rogers State University, we keep things personal. It all starts here. We make sure our graduates get the most out of their education. RSU has campuses in Claremore, Bartlesville, and Pryor, with on-campus housing and a wide variety of programs to suit your needs. It all starts here. Rogers State University. Whether it's a wedding, birthday, family reunion, or company event, give your next big event a unique country feel at our Red Barn Event Center located just north of Tulsa. We feature plenty of party room inside and out for up to 350 guests, a huge open floor space, and even a big stage. The Red Barn features a full kitchen and separate bride and groom dressing areas. Outside weddings are beautiful under our 100-year-old pecan tree. For your next big event, with a do-it-yourself wedding, the Red Barn Event Center is the perfect choice. Booking now for future events. And it's almost post time at Remington Park. Their thoroughbred racing season starts this Friday, runs through December the 15th. You're talking out to Dale Day with a preview of Remington Race Report. The 2019 Remington Park Thoroughbred season starts Friday, August 23rd, and the opening night feature is a dandy. The $175,000 Governor's Cup for older horses at a mile and an eighth. Last year's winner, Hence, is back, and he'll face some very formidable competition. Hence is back at Remington Park, and he seeks his first victory since last year's Governor's Cup. Trained by Steve Aspison, his top competition may come out of the same barn. Looking at Lee, second in the 2017 Kentucky Derby, is set for his first Remington Park attempt. Owned by LNN Racing of Tulsa, Oklahoma, the millionaire recently won the Downs at Albuquerque Handicap. He is set to become the highest placing finisher of a Kentucky Derby to start in a race in Oklahoma. Trainer Larry Jones is going to try again at Remington Park with Believe in Royalty. The four-year-old Colt gained down the stretch and narrowly missed winning the 2018 Oklahoma Derby, finishing second by just a nose to the victor, Lone Sailor. 
A couple of opening weekend notes to keep in mind. Beginning at 6 p.m. on Friday night, August 23rd, early arrivers to the racing entrance will receive a beautiful Remington Park ball cap keepsake. Then on Saturday, August 24th, again at 6 p.m., sign up to play the free game, win play, show me the money. A $2,500 grand prize is available in that contest. At Remington Park in Oklahoma City, I'm Dale Day. Now back to Sports Scene. By the way, that nine race opening night program for Remington Park this Friday has 90 horses entered in the overnight. Average size field of 10. And how about this combined purses? 373,000 for the first evening of racing at Remington Park. It'll be a great season out there. All right, Coach, time for parting shots. Lead us off. Parting shots. Uh, you know, this is a great, great week. School starting across the state of Oklahoma. We want everyone to be careful when you go through school zones. And we want you to think about supporting your local high school, no matter where you are. It's very important. Uh, the last few years have been really difficult for us. Uh, the legislature has not found ways to fund education the way it should be in, in the state of Oklahoma. And so when you go to those games, when you go to those PTA meetings, when you go to open house at, at those schools, remember you're supporting your kids and the future of Oklahoma. See you at the school. Hey, another good sign of college football is almost here. Our media guides have arrived. That's right. We all started. Well, let's see. We have Oklahoma State. They, by the way, won the contest this year. 244 pages packed full of cowboy football information. Oklahoma, 212 pages, their media guide. And Tulsa, 174 pages. I tried to weigh these. About five or six pounds worth of media guides, by the way. They all come with all the statistics, all the special highlights, but they're also kind of known as recruiting books as well. They get out to some of the top prospects and show them what the schools have. So they list all their championships, all their top football players, all their award winners, all their NFL players as well. These media outlets, by the way, are uh, outstanding for uh, any fans. They can get them as well. So enjoy football almost right here. All right, Coach, looking forward now to some big events coming up, including a big one in Broken Arrow. We have boxing coming on a Friday night, the 23rd of August. Rumble in the Rose District. That's right. It's going to be interesting. Main Street. In the Rose District in Broken Era, we're going to have Showtime uh, televised right. nationwide, worldwide, uh, uh, seven or eight boxing matches. Now, what is really interesting about that yeah. is the feature match will not be on. Yeah, Trey, Trey Morrison, Morrison right. is not going to be featured on Showtime. I think there were negotiations that went on <laughs> or that didn't go yeah. on, and so he won't be on TV. But uh, if you get a chance to go to Broken Era... Uh, you know, on that night, I think uh, on the 23rd, it's right. going to be really interesting. It's a Friday night. Right in the middle of downtown, by the way. And again, Trey Morris will be there. He's uh, now 16-0. and 0. He's won all of his fights in the heavyweight division by knockout. So they also have on their undercard some outstanding other uh, fights for you to enjoy. So get out there between uh, 6 and 10 o'clock, 10 and 11 o'clock. They say it's going to be it's the biggest sporting event ever in the history of Broken Arrow. Look ahead to Oklahoma sports scene uh, coming up. Coach, uh, our next show, we'll have the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, a great group to be represented here. Well, Gene Barrett, uh, who is the president of the, of the NFL Retired Players Association of Oklahoma, uh, you know, the, the, their golf tournament and the things right. that they do for us, uh, the high schools in the state of Oklahoma, uh, over the last three or four years has been outstanding to give checks to those schools that do not have those funds. Uh, and th this is getting bigger and bigger every year. It's our kickoff charity golf classic. It's September 8th through the 9th. And we'll be telling you more about that when Gene joins us on our next Oklahoma sports scene show. Don King, the longtime voice, the Jenks High School football Trojans, he'll be with us as well. And we have an interview we shot earlier with Coach Philip Montgomery, the head football coach at TU, as we get ready for the Golden Hurricane season. And of course, we preview on the Big Four football college games and high school football as well. All next time on Oklahoma sports scene. Thanks for joining us. See you next week on Oklahoma sports scene. <laughs>